What's going on guys and welcome to who to sign for. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips, this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly aimed at those you either who may be new to the game or just need a little bit of advice or for those you're who's trying a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team that you may be using in career mode this year and in today's episode of who to sign for guys i mean if you're looking for an rtg in the serie a there aren't many better fits than these guys yes sasuolo fantastic team for a career mode and let me tell you why now they're a challenge no doubt about that they start off with a reasonably poor team considering the Serie A's quality. Uh, they start with a small budget of around 15 to 16 million pounds. So for a top division side, it's not the best. And their objectives in the first season, were well, they're reasonable. Reach the last 16 of the cup and finish in mid-table in the Serie A. Last year in the Serie A, I think they finished in 11th place, I think it was. But it's not a great team. There's not much quality to it. And there's no doubt about it. In the first season, you're not going to throw your hat into the ring of being Serie A champions. In fact, you'll struggle to even get European football. It's a really good team for an RTG. It needs a major change. You'll see there are some really old players here, including a 40-year-old goalkeeper. There are several players that are in their mid to late 30s, like right on cue there, Peluso, a uh, centre-half as well. But... There's also a few players in their young, uh, young years, if you will, uh, early uh, 20s or teens that have got some sublime potential as well. Yeah, it's a really good mix, this Sassuolo team of a few players in their prime right now, in their mid-20s. And then there's a few really old players and a couple of really good teenagers as well. And as you know, Sassuolo, you'll probably know about those best talents here at the club, both in their early 20s. They are, of course, the forwards. I just went past them right there, Skamaka and Raspadori. But they've also got um, Fratesi as well, who's a young central midfielder. So Sassuolo actually have three of the very best Italian talents in the game. It's brilliant. And that's what makes them such a great team for an RTG because you know that those three players... Uh, Raspadori has his contract coming the end of the year as well. They're going to be the sort of free players, the free musketeers to stay with you throughout all the years you're at Sassuolo and you're to try and build a team around them. Skamaka and Raspadori, the young strikers, and of course Fratesi, the young midfielder as well. So it's a really, really interesting team to use. Again, they're, they're not a side with what you'd call a rich history per se. They have now established themselves as a strong mid-table Serie A team, but... It is a team that needs a lot of change and a lot of improvement if you are going to get into the big time, the Champions League, in a few years' time. Um, now, interestingly enough, because Sassuolo play a 4 2 3 1, what I would recommend doing is retraining Raspadori from striker to centre forward. Now, right now in the team setup, you'll notice he's playing slightly deeper than Skamaka right now. And to get both of them in the first team at the very same time to maximise their potential, you know, it, it's really important, I would say, to make sure they're both on the pitch playing regularly, not one off the bench or rotating the two of them. So my suggestion is to retrain Raspadori to either a CAM or a CF. It, it won't take you that long to do that. And it, about two weeks, I think it was, um, in the case of this save here. And it means you can get them both in the first team at the very same time. And Raspadori's got some great technical stats to sit a little bit deeper as opposed to being a natural out-and-out -out striker as well. Um, so you saw the players put on the transfer list there. Again, this team needs a major, major change. There's a few players here that are what you'd consider to be Deadwood players. You know, very little quality in their mid to late 20s. You know, probably not going to get any better. Personally speaking with Sassuolo, you know, because you're not playing in Europe right now, the depth this team has is pretty decent, but it doesn't need to be thick. You know, as I often say, in FIFA career mode, injuries are very rare. It's highly unlikely you'll get many players suspended. So it's unlikely you'll have like an injury crisis in one position for example so in FIFA career mode depth is really only important if you're playing in a European competition and of course in the Serie A you've got 38 games a season and only one cup as well so for Sassuolo there's a decent amount of depth here but it doesn't need to be so in the case of quite a few players here like Romagna and Defrel and you would have seen Pedro Obiang as well I would just put them on a transfer list these are players that could be good squad players you know and, and be pretty decent fringe players but you don't really need 
them in the first season because you're not playing a European competition. So depth is not that important. Personally, I, I wouldn't try and rock the boat. If you get a transfer offer coming from one of those players, maybe try and negotiate for an extra million, for example. But ultimately... Just sell. Just get their salaries off the books. That's the most important thing. But for new signs with Sassuolo, where would I recommend strengthening? Well, as you would have seen the team, it's actually got a really solid attack. Now, of course, we recalled Jeremy Boger at 77 rated because he's more than enough to play a first team squad role in this team here. I mean, you've got Skamaka up top, Raspadori slightly deeper, a couple of decent wingers, and then you've got Fratesi through the middle as well. I, I think with Sassuolo, you just got to get a new back line. You know, the, the, the attack is really decent and it's young as well, but you need to get a new back line. You've got aging center arse that are pretty poor. Ihan's probably your best option, but at 73 rated, you can do better than that. Jeremy Toljan's an okay left back, but in his mid-20s, not going to get much better than he is right now. And Consigli is an old goalkeeper with his contract come the end of the year who you'll want to sell in the first season as he's going to plummet in rating very quickly. So you want a new back line with Sassuolo. My number one target, and I always recommend him for a great, decently priced centre-half in this year's game, Luis Felipe of Lazio. Yep, he's got a contract at the end of the season, which means you can get him for under the valuation. We spent £17 million to get him. That's a really good transfer. And whilst that's basically Sassuolo's entire transfer budget, let me tell you, worth every single penny. He's in his early 20s, 79 overall, and he grows five rating to 84 overall at his full potential. I'd also recommend partnering him with another Italian center half who's still come the end of the year, Nicolo Casale of Hellas Verona, 23 years old. And yes, 73 rated isn't the highest. That's the same as Vlad Kirikes, the Romanian, Ferrari, Ihan as well. But this guy's in his early 20s at 23 and he's got 81 potential as well. So he and Luis Felipe will be your starting CB duo for all the years you are at the Stadio Enzo Ricky. I mean, he's a, he's a solid center half, an old school center half. He's six foot three. He's tall. He's got good strength, good aggression. Yeah, old school center half, pa uh, partnering Luis Felipe. They will be your starting two center halves for all the years you're at the uh, Stadio Enzo Ricci uh, until you can replace Casale with someone slightly higher rated. So he did change the position of Raspadori uh, from striker to CF. As you can see, he grew a rating as well. Uh, so that just goes to show you he's more than capable of sitting deeper in this team. Again, in the 4 2 3 1, it's your choice. You can convert him to CAM or to CF. It will take slightly longer to convert to CAM, but because of how you can adjust the position in this year's career mode, it's not a big deal if it's CF uh, in this team. Playing slightly deeper as a second striker, if you will, uh, to Skamaka. And I do recommend that as well. Whilst Raspadori's got a great finish on him and he's a really great young striker, like Skamaka is a much better out and out striker, if you will, and not quite as versatile as Raspadori. Raspadori can also play on the wing as well. So if you want, you can retrain him to the right or left hand side. But in my opinion, he'll be better as a CF in this team. And uh, we also sold Jurisic here as well uh, to Burnley for £5 million too. Once again, this is a solid player, man. You know, he's got 75 uh, overall. So he's a solid player to have. But at 29 years old, he's not going to get any better. He's only going to get worse. And again, in this team, he might not be a star for you. You can get better, you can get younger, and someone with more potential for the future. And speaking of which, this is the whole point as to why I sold this guy as well. Now, Andrea Consigli at 80 overall is actually, I believe, your highest rated player in the team. So when we talk about the Sassuolo side as not having much quality, you might think, well, why are you selling your highest rated and your best player? player in the team when his contract's not even upcoming at the end of the year? Well, the answer is very, very simple. He's 34 years old. Yep, he's no spring chicken and he's only going to get worse. So come the end of season one, he might be around 77. Goalkeepers don't decline as quickly as outfield players in the game, but maybe 77, 78 overall, for example. He's only going to get worse. If you want, you can keep him for season one and then look to replace him next season. But to me, I would start the rebuild straight away as we sold Pedro Obiang here to uh, Graham Potts, Brian for two and three quarter mil. I'd start the rebuild straight away so you can get as much money as possible. He'll only gonna get, he's only going to get worse. He's only going to get older because that's how time works. And obviously that means that his valuation is going to drop month after month, season after season. So in my opinion, I'd cash in now, get as much as you can and look for a, a younger number one. And there are several players I'd recommend, but because Sassuolo don't have much of a budget or a big budget, I should say, you're 
want to make sure you get a good value for money deal. And I think this guy is one of the best goalkeepers you can get for a value for money signing between the sticks this year. It is Guillermo Ochoa's understudy, Carlos Acevedo. Now, this guy is 77 overall, so his free ratings lower than Consigli, yes. But at 25 years old, he's nine years younger than Consigli, almost a whole decade younger. And he also has 81 potential as well. And because his contracts are coming at the end of the year, you can get him for under the valuation of 10 10 mil we spent 8 million to get him and his salary is re is reasonably cheap as well yep Acevedo to me would be a really great replacement for Consigli nine years younger only three ratings lower and again he's got 81 potential when you look at his stats here as well he's he's really already very good in the key stats for goalkeeper which is diving and reflexes they're both at 81 right now so if you put him on a sweeper keeper development plan that'll train up the other three positioning kicking and handling and that means he'll grow really quickly as well because at the moment his um, is what you call like um, save goalkeeping stats if you will are actually already really good at 77 overall so I think Acevedo to me is the perfect successor for Consigli in this team nine years younger three ratings lower yes but 81 potential really really solid replacement in my opinion um, we also sold uh, one of our backup left backs uh, Georgios Kiriakopoulos here 25 years old 69 overall I mentioned earlier Sassuolo have quite a lot of what you call dead players here this is one of them he's in his mid-20s so he's not going to get much better he's only 69 overall and there's better options you've got here already and you can get better when you look to sign as well so i'd definitely sell him we sold magnanelli and ferrari uh two players in their 30s once again we don't get much money but the most important thing is just getting their salaries off the books and collecting a minor pay uh, paycheck for them as well so we've got a few million uh, for these three players combined here. And I would recommend a new left back with Sassuolo as well. Uh, two players I'd recommend here, Anthony Cacci of Strasbourg and also Alex Centella's Valmeria. Once again, if you're looking for good value for money deals, the best way to get that is to look at players that their deals are coming at the end of the year. Both of these players had their contract expiring in 12 months time. Unfortunately, I waited a bit too long with these two here. You should be able to get them for around their valuation, if not slightly under when you do a career mode save. But for me, I waited a bit too long and both the players had signed contract extensions. So for Catchy, for example, you can normally get them for around five and a half to six and a half million pounds, which is under valuation. But for me, because I waited too long, I had to spend a little bit more than that. Three and a half mil over the valuation, 10.5 mil. And it was the same case with Alex Centellas at Almeria as well. His contracts are coming at the end of the year when you start the save. So if you go quick enough, you should be able to get them for around six and a half to seven mil. But unfortunately, I waited far too long and that meant I had to pay through my nose to get him. Yep, 10.5 mil is the fee I agreed with. Both left backs here. And really the choice is yours on who you would prefer to have as your new starting left back for all the years you're at Sassuolo. They're both around the same age. They've both got around the same overall. They've both got around the same potential. Really, it's personal choice. Um, I've just never used Catchy in-game before, whereas I have used Alex Centellas and he's a really solid young left back. He is still very young in his early 20s. He's got 82 potential and starting overall being 74 means he's good enough to start in this team straight away 21 years old really solid potential i love the fact that stamina is his highest rated stat at 83 as well if you train up his work rates uh, from medium medium to high high you've got a solid energetic wing back in your team for all the years you're at sassuolo again he's good enough to be a starting left back in this team and as i mentioned earlier with sassuolo you don't need to sign a new striker you've got raspadori and skamaka you don't need to sign a new winger if you don't want to do so really it's all about improving the back line and we've done that with a new left back a new goalkeeper and two new center halves as well so the little money we had remaining with Sassuolo I did decide to bring a couple more young Italian talents again this is an interesting team Sassuolo because we've got three of the best young Italian talents in the game in Fratesi, Scamacca and Raspadori but there's a lot of aging players as well so what you want to do is flip the script you know sell those old players and bring in those young talents I would recommend a new young midfielder uh, for the future we signed Eduardo Bove of Jose Mourinho's Roma. You can get him for around round evaluation. He's a really solid young midfielder and definitely worth picking up in my opinion. And as I simulated through the first game of the season, which was the Coppa Italia round one, which we just overcame AC Milan on penalties, we'd 
see after we got the season ticket money, we had just shy of two and a half million pounds in our budget to make one or possibly two more signings with the Sassarola team. But really, they can only be decent young Italians. And if we're talking about decent young Italian talent, well, I did say earlier, you don't need a new striker. And that is true. But as a good third choice slash fourth choice striker, this guy, I mean, honestly, if you are doing an Italian career mode this year, I don't care what team you're managing, whether it's a poor Serie A team, one of the likes of the, the teams down the bottom, like Venezia, for example, great team for an RTG, or even if you're using one of the big boys, like AAC, Inter, or Juve, I still recommend bringing this guy in. Why? Well, he just won the Swiss Super League with FC Zurich. He's just been capped at senior level with Italy and won his first two caps on the main stage. He's such a fabulous young talent. It is Wilfred Gnonto. Yes, this kid starts off very lowly rated at 65 overall. He's got 83 potential. Yes, the three best young Italian strikers outside of Moise Keane in the game are Raspadori, Scamacca, and this guy right here. Wilfried Gnonto is just 17 years old. He grows 18 ratings. And again, whilst in this team, in the first couple of years, he won't play too much. He's one of those players that grows quietly in the background. And he'll be an amazing backup striker for Scamacca as the years go by. I definitely recommend him for any Italian career mode this year. But also, uh, the final signing I tried to pull off was this guy right here. Uh, Lorenzo Parola of Monza. Now, I believe he's actually on loan from Inter Milan. But in the game, he's listed as a official Monza player. Uh, we actually swapped out Ruan. He's a, uh, a young Brazilian centre-half with not much potential. He starts off, I believe, 63 overall and doesn't grow very uh, very much, whereas this guy does. Lorenzo Parola, a teenage talent, starts off 64 overall, but he's got 81 potential. So we just swapped out a player with very little quality right now and very little potential for a player with very little quality right now with a lot of potential. Yeah, Lorenzo Parola in a few years time will be a new third choice centre half behind Luis Felipe and Casale as well. So on the back of making those signings we were done with Sassuolo as you can see we sold those ageing players Magnelli at 36 Consigli at 34, Defrel at 30 as well, Kirikes 31, yet we sold those ageing players and we look at talent coming in and primarily the young Italian talent as well, it's fantastic, only one non-Italian, sorry two non-Italians coming in in Acevedo and Centelles but I said with Sassuolo you got a great uh, wide midfield duo. You've got um, Raspadori and Skamaka as your CF and your striker. You've got Fratesi sitting deeper. What you need to do is get a new back line. We did that. We got ourselves two new center arms, a new left back and a new goalkeeper as well. We didn't just improve this Sassuolo team, but we also made it far, far, and I mean far far younger as well, which is the which is the key for an RTG. So as per usual, we simulate the end of the season, see how we will get on in the first season. And as you can see... Well, we were asked to finish your mid-table in the Serie A and reach the last 16 of the Cup, which we'd already done. And as you can see, we did it very comfortably in the end. Yep, an 11th place finish for Sassuolo in Season 1. Again, I think that's where they actually finished in real life, Sassuolo, 11th place. And again, this is a this is a really fun team to do an RTG with because the Serie A is wildly unpredictable in Season 1. Unlike in the Bundesliga, where it's practically always Bayern, if not maybe Borussia Dortmund, unlike in Liga, when it's it's practically always going to be PSG, for example. In the Serie A, it's a really wild season one. It's like five or six teams that can win the title. It won't be you at Sassuolo, but there's no reason why you can't sneak into the top ten. We're very close to doing that, but mid-table is definitely achievable. We were asked to reach the last 16 of the Cup. We actually went one, uh, sorry, two rounds further. We knocked out both Milan and Juventus on our way to the semis. But, oh, God, please don't look at that aggregate scoreline. Oh, my goodness. It's always funny when you do a simulation and you see just how badly you were beaten. What was that? 7-1? 7-1 over two legs? Hey, listen, we got to the semis, but um, the way we lost the semi was uh, was quite tough. But even so, we exceeded our cup objective. We hit our league objective. And again, the key with Sassuolo in season one was all about getting younger. It was all about bringing in young talent to replace those aging players in their 30s. I think we did a pretty decent job. Carlos Acevedo grew those three ratings in the first season to be just as good as Consigli, who he's nine years younger than in season one. That's a brilliant piece of business. Alex Centelles grew four ratings to 78 overall. He'll be a starting left back for all the years. Uh, you're at the Stadio Enzo. Ricky, Luis Felipe, your new highest rated player in the team, grew three ratings to 82 overall. Casale grew four to 77 overall. And this is what I mean. In season one, 
You don't have to sell the whole team, cash in on your wonder kids, Raspadori, Skamaka and Fratesi, and just buy like one star player in the hope they can single-handedly drag you into the top four. No, this Sassuolo team is a long-term RTG project. You've got aging players here who you want to sell as soon as possible, all those boys in the 30s, and then you want to bring in a young talent to add to the likes of, again, Fratesi, Skamaka and Raspadori, three of the best young Italian talents in the the game. That's exactly what we did. If you are looking for an RTG and a long-term project, I think Sassuolo are probably the best team to use in the Serie A. They've got three of the best young Italian talents. They've got an aging team. It needs a lot of improvement. It's a small budget, but it's a great challenge and definitely worth a go. I had a lot of fun doing a rebuilding the Sassuolo team and I highly recommend them for a Serie A career mode this year if you're looking for an RTG project. But that will end today's episode of Who's Signed For, guys. Big thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't, drop a like. Much love to you all. Have have a fantastic day and I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign for very soon.